Good afternoon. Welcome to Cross Point Church. We are doing our uh, Wednesday uh, midday Bible study. We're in the book of Jonah, chapter 3. I've been putting out podcasts, and I just want to say welcome to you, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So we've been in the book of Jonah uh, for a couple weeks. It's a small book, but it's a great book, and I just want to say, uh, first of all, that it's not just a kid's book. That there are great principles and things in the book of Jonah. It really emphasizes gospel messages right there in the Old Testament of God's saving grace. And so uh, we're excited uh, to uh, do this podcast and this live feed. So in the book of Jonah chapter 1, just a very, very quick review. In the book of Jonah chapter 1, God tells Jonah to get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. That's the very first verse and says preach against it because their evil has come up before me and so we'll notice that God tells Jonah to get up but he doesn't get up he actually takes a path that is down 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 he goes down uh, to uh, Joppa and there he finds a ship that is going to Tarshish now Tarshish is as far away uh, from Nineveh, as you can get, it is the extreme opposite direction. Jonah, not only did he go down uh, to uh, Joppa, but he also was going down away from the Lord. And then when he gets there, he asks if he can ride on the ship. He pays uh, for his journey, and he goes down once again to the bottom of the ship. So we see that Instead of going up, like God told him, he goes down, down. And then finally, at, in chapter uh, 2, we'll discover that Jonah has not only gone down to Joppa and down to the bottom of the ship, but now he's going to be down in the bottom of the uh, great fish's belly, at the bottom, the very bottom of the sea. And so we see that sin and disobedience takes us as far away from God. And so uh, we see that. So Jonah, uh, instead of going up, he goes down. He's swallowed by the great fish. And then in Jonah chapter 2, he prays to God. He remembers God, and he prays to him. And uh, he talks about God's faithful. Something happens to Jonah. It kind of reminds me of the prodigal. He comes to his senses. And he begins to remember God, and he begins to cry out to God, and here he is as far away from God as he can. I believe that he's at the point of death, uh, could have very easily died. Let's look at this. This is the gospel message, because it is the mercy of God that saves him. And when, we're, uh, when we cry out to God and when we uh, repent, as he did, then God uh, is faithful to save us. And so... That is exactly what happened. Now we're going to be in chapter 3. Jonah has prayed. He got sick and vomited Jonah up I believe, to Nineveh to preach the gospel message. It is a gospel message. It's a message of God's uh, judgment if we do not repent. Jonah did everything that he could, could do to resist the call of God. And after he repented... God called him again. What a tremendous message of mercy. How many, like me, have needed not only just another chance, but chance after chance after chance because uh, we haven't obeyed God's word. So God put a call on Jonah's life, and he wanted to use Jonah specifically to reach the Ninevites. He could have used somebody else, but he decided that he was going to use Jonah to do that. And I want to say thank God he still uses men and women today uh, to do the work of God. He could have done it differently. He could have uh, spoke from heaven to mankind, but he decided to use you and I uh, to present that message because we are living stones, as the Bible tells us. We are testimonies of God's grace and of his mercy. So it goes to him and the word, the Lord comes back to him a second time and he tells them to preach the message that I tell you. Now, 
when we begin to look at this, Jonah isn't told immediately what to preach. He said, go to Nineveh, and I'm going to tell you what to preach. Now, how many would like that? Let me tell you that I'm a planner, and I've got notes up here, and they tell me when to stop and when to start and what to talk about. But if I had to go, and I've had to do that before, I don't like it. But sometimes God says, you go here, and when, when you get there, I'm going to tell you what to do. Anybody experience that before? Yeah. Experience it when you're teaching, maybe. Experience it if, whenever uh, you're witnessing to somebody, because the message uh, needs to be, the word and the message stays the same, but sometimes the delivery needs to change because the person is different. Yeah. And so uh, we see that God... Uh, gives Jonah a second chance and he says go there and just wait for instruction and uh, so we should be going there to wait for instruction so God is leading us here's the message God's leading us one step at a time and he only tells us what we need to know how many of you ever heard the word the message that uh, it's just on a need to know basis right and so that's what God's doing for Jonah. Now that's scary, but the thing is, it causes us to have to depend on God. And so that is a great uh, thing to just depend on God. Uh, if you're watching live and you have a question, you can post that. We'll get back to you. We may not, not do it live, but we'll get back to you with questions. Uh, if you're sitting here, I want to let you know you can ask questions. We'll stop. Uh, I like to do an interactive uh, study here. So, Jonah gets the call, he rejects the call, but God calls him again, and God says, go and wait, and I'm going to give you the message. So, let's look at verses 3 and 4. So, Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent, and Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So Jonah went to Nineveh according to the word of God, and he had learned the lesson that resisting the will of God is counterproductive, is futile. Uh, how many ever try, tried to resist God's will? Uh, it doesn't usually turn out very well, does it? Uh, so we see that, and Jonah is now obeying the call of God to go to Nineveh. And this was a huge city. One of the biggest cities uh, in the old world, uh, and it was a very large city, large enough. Um, a lot of the commentaries said that it would take three days to journey around it, so it was probably 60 miles. Uh, this city was encompassed about 60 miles, so that's a huge city even by today's standards. And uh, so Jonah gets there. He's in the day's journey in and he begins to preach this message and he's telling them in 40 days God is going to come in and he's going to overthrow this place with this judgment. What a message. But the good news is that the people believed it. Now we don't talk a lot about this and I'm not going to go into it too much but imagine what you would look like if you had been in the belly of a great fish for three days, I believe the acid in the stomach of that great fish would have uh, bleached Jonah out. I believe he would have been ghostly looking. I don't know what he looked like, but I believe that uh, he got their attention and God got their attention. And so uh, Jonah's preaching this message of God's uh, judgment. And it clearly was emphasized through Jonah. Uh, and the word overthrown there that you see is the same word that is used in the description of Sodom and Gomorrah. So God was going to do uh, just a, a great uh, judgmental, destructive work there uh, in Nineveh. Was, as they say in Kentucky, he was fixing to do some bad stuff. Uh, so uh, anyway, we see that. We see that Jonah preaches the message with earnestness. I mean, if you had been through what Jonah had been through, uh, 
I believe that you would have got the message that God wants this message preached and he wants it preached with some power and some authority. And so Jonah begins to, uh, to do that. And uh, the great news is that the, the people have a response. Let's look at that. We're going to read Jonah chapter 3, verse, verses 5 through 9. So uh, this is, talks about the response of the people, which is repentance. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe. He covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes, and he caused it to be proclaimed and pu published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Just a side note here, the Ninevites were known for their cruelty uh, to their enemies. And so God's uh, telling them to turn from their, the violence that's in their, hand, in their hands. Who can tell? In other words, maybe God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. So the word repentance in this passage uh, is an active word. I don't know if you've ever thought about this or not, but repentance is not a one-time thing. It's an active thing. How many uh, repented of something one day and you wound up doing the same thing again the next day and you had to repent and try to turn from that? So repentance is active. And I believe it's also a process. As we grow towards the Lord, the Holy Spirit will convict us of things that maybe yesterday that he didn't convict us of. And so it's a process of repentance uh, that we go through. The great news is that the people of Nineveh believe God. And repentance starts by believing. Uh, believing and trusting is the beginning, the very beginning of repentance. So, but you can't believe God, the scripture confirms this, without the preaching of the word of God. That's necessary. The word of God is necessary. Real revival, which we need in these days, it doesn't come by emotions. It doesn't come by anything uh, but the Word of God. It's the Word of God that will draw people and draw God's people specifically back to Him. So we need the Word of God. I'm glad that you're joining us today uh, to talk about the Word of God. And so uh, repentance is the beginning of revival. And then we see the king uh, gets up, and it's great when a leader will lead the way. He gets up and he declares that, hey, we're going to have a fast. We're going to put on sackcloth. And it tells us from the least to the greatest of them. Now, that can be applied two ways. From the king all the way down to the poorest person who had nothing, the king saying, we got to do this. But it also means from the oldest to the youngest. Wow, this is a revival that hits every age group. And the people are turning back to God and they're repenting. And so it's just going to be a great day. Uh, so when I say the word repentance, it's not business as usual. In other words, there's a heart that turns and actions that turn towards God. You can't keep doing the same thing, in other words, when you repent, right? God's drawing us to a closer walk with Him uh, in, this, in this process. And, and I think you can uh, see that there. So, something has to change when you repent. Something has to be different. And what changed with these people? What changed? Anybody want to comment on that? What changed? It can be physical or it can be spiritual. What changed with these Ninevites when they repented? They turned from their evil. Okay, so they returned from their evil. 
That's good. What else? What's the physical thing that happened? Anybody know? I think they got disgusted with themselves <laughs> and realized <laughs> they had messed up. Okay, so they knew they were under God's judgment. Uh, a physical thing that happened was uh, repentance is a change, right? They actually changed their clothes. So there was an outward sign of repentance. They changed their clothes. They put on sackcloth, uh, which is a really thick, coarse cloth. And uh, really what it speaks of is rejecting worldly comforts and turning towards God. That's the reason why they did that in the Old Testament. It was to give an outward sign of an inward change. And that's really what repentance uh, is all about as well. So, And then they got so extreme that they even had their animals and their uh, everything that they owned, all their animals. So if they had a dog, they made the dog wear sackcloth and put ashes on them. If they had a cat, they did the same thing. Uh, I don't know if they had dogs and cats then or not, but if they had uh, herds and flocks and all of that kind of stuff, everything, literally, they're saying, we're going to turn so drastically towards God because they want God's forgiveness and they want God to not destroy them. So uh, they, they begin to do that. And, uh, you know, when you think about repentance, it's asking God for his mercy and not for his justice, right? When we repent, how many knows that we deserve when we mess up and when we sin, we deserve God's judgment. But thank God he's gracious and merciful uh, when we repent. And so uh, what God doesn't want us to do. How many have ever heard somebody say, well, that was my fault, but this happened and it made me do that. And But you don't know my background, but you don't know uh, where I came from. And you don't know all the things that caused me. You see, God doesn't really want to hear that. He doesn't want excuses. He wants us to begin to really, truly have a change of heart and a change of mind. So, he tells us, who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger? So, repentance is asking for God to give us mercy and love uh, and for God to relent now, does God change his mind? Does God change his mind? Absolutely. Because there's almost an unseen if in what Jonah began to repent, begin to tell them. Jonah is telling them, you're going to experience God's judgment if you don't repent. But if you do, you might have a chance. And so uh, there's this uh, God really was going to change his mind about bringing judgment on this city at this time. Uh, and who else? Yes, question. So my question is, is of course we're at talking about changing minds and stuff like that. Is it so much that God changes his mind or he just gives us two decisions that we can make and he'll go with each, whichever one we choose? So, so I, I, I'll answer that. God's faithful to his word. <clears throat> His word declares if, that we'll turn to him. Uh, even in the Old Testament, it says this. Uh, if you'll turn back to him, then he'll be faithful to keep that word of blessing. But he's also faithful to keep that word uh, of judgment if we don't. And he spells it out. We Really, there are no surprises. God tells us. So really, it's not God changing his mind, but it's God saying, giving us another chance. Really. Uh, so great question. Uh, so who can tell if God will turn and relent and uh, so that we won't perish? Now, think about this. Who better to preach a message of repentance than Jonah? I mean, <laughs> imagine. Jonah is preaching here from experience. Can I tell you that some of the best messages any preacher or any teacher can give are lessons that have been hard learned and experienced. Amen? You see, when I preach passionately, most of the time it's because I've experienced that particular issue or that particular problem. And so I'm preaching out of love, but I'm preaching out of passion because I don't want you to have to go through that, 
right? And so here's Jonah saying, look, I'm evidence. If you don't straighten up, old boys and girls, you're going to be in trouble, right? And so what? who better than Jonah uh, to preach the message of repentance because he knew his own need to repent. So, uh, and what was God's response when the people did this? Look at verse 10. Then God saw their works. God's watching. How many remember that old song? That all, there's an all-seeing eye watching you, right? Uh, and, and, you know, I always thought that was kind of a spooky song, but it is true. God is watching us. And God says, I, he saw their works, that they had turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. How many knows that God doesn't want to bring justice and judgment, but he wants to give us mercy? Amen? And so God relented from that. He saw their works. He honored their repentance, uh, even though... What they had done in the past was worthy of judgment. God was still merciful to them, and he was moved with compassion, and he reversed uh, the message. He reversed the decision that he had. Now, I'm, I want us to understand that God isn't obligated to forgive us. Now, I know that sounds like a, a crazy thing. He is obligated to forgive us. But when we repent, his mercy and his justice, uh, his mercy begins to kick in. And so uh, we don't obligate God by repenting. What we're doing is actually saying, God, I know I messed up and I need some help here. And I need your mercy and not your judgment. And so God relented from it. Uh, now, let me ask you a question. Imagine you're Jonah, and we're getting close to wrapping up here. Uh, imagine that you are Jonah, and you have preached this message. You've preached this message, and now, because God's decided that he's not going to bring the judgment, what does that make you look like? Does it make you look like a false prophet? Does it matter? <laughs> uh, so, the reason why God could do that is because uh, he, the people had made the change that he required. So, Jonah really wasn't a false prophet. He was saying, hey, if you don't do this, then here are the, the things that are going to happen. The word of God's true in every instance. If we're obedient, it's true. For disobedience, it's true. They're, it's all laid out there for us. And as a matter of fact, in Jeremiah 18, 7 through 8, it tells us this, that God is consistent to his word. Now hear this. The instant, this is God speaking, uh, the instant a nation uh, and a kingdom that I have plucked up or pulled down uh, and to destroy if that nation whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I have thought to bring upon it. So that's out of Jeremiah chapter 18. So Jonah's preaching was really a warning. That's all preaching is. That's all teaching is. Honestly, you could even lump testifying or witnessing into that. It's kind of like a warning of, of, of God's word of his judgment, and it's an invitation to repent uh, to avoid God's judgment. So, uh, any questions so far? Do you think the whole city repented, or the majority? Do I think the whole city, or the, just the majority of the people repented? It doesn't really matter. I, I don't know, but I, we do know that when uh, Abram Abraham was talking to God uh, about Sodom and Gomorrah and about God's judgment coming upon him that, that he was like, well, what if 50 people, or what if, you know, God began to say, okay, if, if 50 people have, you know, turned and aren't, aren't evil, then I won't destroy the city. And so I do believe that a few, at minimum, 
and maybe everybody repent because of I think there's evidence in the Bible that that would be true. I mean, I don't think God would treat Sodom and Gomorrah different, even though he does destroy the city because Abraham gets all the way down to a real small number and there's still only just a few righteous people. Really only Lot and doesn't even say that his family was righteous, but just Lot, really. So but I believe that God, if just his people would repent, turn from me, wicked ways, like 2 Chronicles 7 14 tells us, that he'll heal our land. And so, I don't know what that number is. That's a good question. Uh, but I, I believe, in this instance, that the majority turned because the king told them to, number one. But also, I believe, they, they believe Jonah. His, whatever he looked like when he came out of that great fish, I think it was, you know, Spooky and scary and uh, I don't know. We don't know. The, the interesting thing here is we don't know all of the words that Jonah spoke. I believe his message was more than just, hey, God's going to bring judgment. This is just what's shared here. Maybe Jonah is sharing his testimony about, you know, I ran from God and I was disobedient and a great fish swallowed me up and, you know, we don't know what he really preached. So uh, I think again that speaks to us that we need to share our message what God's brought us up out of and, uh, and I think that's very effective when we, when we begin to do that. Uh, Jonah chapter 3 verse 5 is really the central theme of what Jonah said. Uh, so we can assume though that that's not really everything he said. But it's a very short message. Uh, well, and I have a hard time believing him. I mean, it was kind of scary looking. <laughs> you tell me, and all he said was, your city's going to be destroyed. Right. I had a hard time believing him. So it's reasonable to think that they have some kind of context yeah. to believe Jonah's message. Or that the people's hearts, here's what also happens, is Many times when God sends us to somebody to give them a message or to witness to them, God's already prepared their hearts. And maybe this city, even though it was very wicked, was at the point of, you know what? We've been so bad, we, we just believe that God is, is going to bring judgment. And so uh, we, didn't, we don't really know that. Uh, so God didn't judge Nineveh as... He said, but we do know that 150 years later, and it's referenced in the book of Nahum, uh, that God did bring judgment on the city. And so it was just delayed because of these people's repentance. So the city, maybe they went back to their own ways. I don't know what happened. Uh, but anyway, they were, they were able to... Uh, divert or delay the judgment of God. you have a question? Well, I want to mention something. So in the New Living Translation, uh, Jonah chapter 3, verse uh, 5 says something interesting. It says, The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. Mm -hmm. So in that statement without saying that they each individually said, God, please forgive me of this, I think they had a repentant heart no matter what because it said all the people of Nineveh from the greatest to the least uh, all had a repentant heart and they all declared a fast. And then, of course, the king says, I mean, it would be to us like if President Trump was to get up and go, we have screwed up and rip his suit in two. Right. You know? Right. Um, and that would be the same concept is that at that moment they realize that, wow, even our leaders behind this, well, that's that's proven the point, you know, kind of thing. Good. Good. I just thought that was interesting how it read that. And don't you think the key word there is all? Key word is all. They all repented. Mm -hmm. uh, at least outwardly. <laughs> you know, we don't know people's hearts sometimes. They could have been 
obedient to the king and not necessarily obedient to God, but it, I believe it, that if not all, the biggest majority of, of these people were very, very repentant. Um, and, you know, Jonah's message had come through. So what are some of the things, and actually, Pastor Jason, I don't know if you can find it or not. I had some questions, and I, did you all have questions? Did I bring them up? I didn't bring them up, did I? So, uh, we'll just end with any basic questions that you guys have. But I want to give some of the main themes of uh, chapter 3 here. I think the very first theme that we see, number one, is that God gives second chances even when we sin and we run from Him. And so, that's so powerful. Really, you know, I've been stating all along through the podcast and all of this, that you see the gospel message in this Old Testament book. And uh, when we sin and when we run from God, God's faithful to really give us a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance. And, you know, God's uh, mercy is uh, never ending and never failing. And so we, we see that, that God's merciful. Number two, God is merciful to the sinner and gives opportunity for them to repent. So we see that. God, uh, even though they were a very evil nation, even though they were very violent, uh, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, we don't talk about that a whole lot, but Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, and he had good reason not to want to go to Nineveh. Number one, they were enemies of the Israelites. Number two, they were known for how cruel, and uh, there are actually pictures that they have I guess I don't know how the pictures, but anyway, there are uh, artifacts from that time frame that show just how cruel these pictures kind of show how they would uh, cause the people to suffer whenever they captured another nation. So uh, they would string them up and stretch them out and, you know, just all kinds of just very violent things. And so so, anyway, God, thankful, we're thankful that God gives mercy. Number three, repentance comes when the word of God is preached. Repentance is a process. Uh, it's more than just feeling sorry for what we've done wrong. So, repentance uh, is a process, uh, and it's turning towards God and away from the things that displease Him. So, that's, that's some of the main things that we can get uh, from Jonah chapter 3. Any questions as we wrap up here? Do, do you think somewhat that their repentant heart could have been more turning away from, possibly turning away from what they were doing, but maybe not fully turning their heart to God in well, repentance? Really, repentance is both turning uh, away from the sin, but in doing that, we are turning towards God. So really you have both happening there. Uh, true repentance would be both sides of that. I think sometimes people will call it repent uh, because they got in trouble. How many ever changed just because you got in trouble that your heart didn't change? Right? <laughs> I mean, uh, when you're a kid and mama slaps your hands because you're trying to get in a cookie jar and she told you not getting cookies till after dinner. Well, you, you repent, you know, you cry, and you, and you tell mama you're not going to do it again, but if she turned her back, you might do it anyway if your heart didn't change. So, uh, you know, repentance is that full turning away from the sin, but also turning back towards God and being obedient, that full process. But good question. Anybody else? Well, we want to say thank you for joining us today, uh, especially those who came live and in person. We appreciate you being here. Uh, next time, as a matter of fact, for the group that's here, I'm going to give you those questions that I forgot to bring up. Uh, but they just ask the basic questions to make sure that you understand uh, the chapter. And so, no new things really in those questions. So I'll give those to you. And uh, you might even somehow be able to post those questions whenever we uh, put the podcast out there later on. So, God bless you. And uh, may his face shine upon you, and may uh, you experience God's peace. We love you, appreciate you, God bless you.
Amen.